It's time now for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons one of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled The Case of the Woman Who Married a Murderer. Now, we want to ask all of you to make this highly convincing test. It is simply this. The next time you suffer from the pain of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try taking anison instead of the method you now use. We suggest this because you are following sound principles when you take anison tablets. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. Literally thousands of people have been introduced to Anison by their own physicians or dentists who have given them Anison tablets at some time or other. For your own sake, try Anison. You'll be delighted with the relief it brings. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Ask for Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N, at any drug counter. <laughs> Now for Mr. Keene and the case of the woman who married a murderer. Our scene opens in a small midtown apartment. It is 11 o'clock at night, and a young man is just letting himself in the door, unaware that in his room, waiting for him, is an unexpected visitor in the form of a murderer. What? What are you doing in my apartment? How did you get in here? Don't stand there like that. Tell me why you broke into my apartment or I'll call the police. Did you hear me? I'll... No. Put that gun down. Put it down before I... You... You... You murdered me. You file these reports, Mike. Sure thing, Mr. Keene. And that winds up the Dawson case, I think. Uh... Hmm. That's odd. Uh, sir? Someone's standing outside our office. You can see the shadow through the glass in the door. I think it's a woman, Mike. Well, it looks as though she can't make up her mind whether to come in or not, Mr. Keene. I-, I see what she wants. Oh! Oh, excuse me. Looking for someone, lady? Are you Mr. Keene? Oh, I'm Mike Clancy, Mr. Keene's partner. Uh, he's right here. Is there something I can do for you? Yes. Please, may I come in? Why, of course. Mr. Keene, I'm Mrs. Linda Roberts. I... I still don't know whether it was right for me to come here like this. Sit down, Mrs. Roberts. Thank you. Mr. Keene, a friend of mine was murdered several days ago. His name was Kenneth Ward. Oh, yes, I read about that in the newspapers. Wasn't he the fellow who was shot to death in his own apartment? Yes, Mr. Clancy, the case is still a mystery to the police. Have you come here to ask my help in solving it, Mrs. Roberts? Well, partly, but I have another reason, Mr. Keene. What other reason? Uh, So hard to say this. I still love my husband, no matter what he's done. But he must be going out of his mind. Something's happened to John. I'm I'm terrified, Mr. Keene, for him and for myself. Are you implying that your husband may have had something to do with the death of your friend, Kenneth Ward? I don't know, Mr. Keene. I only know that my husband's behavior has made me feel that he wants to get rid of me. Well, Mrs. Roberts, exactly what was the relationship between your husband and Kenneth Ward, the murdered man? John and Kenneth were once very close friends. Then they had two violent disagreements that made them enemies. One of them was over money. John, my husband, had lent 
chemist fifteen hundred dollars, and it was never repaid. I see. And the second reason they had quarreled, Mrs. Roberts? That was over me, Mr. Keene. Oh. At one time, Kenneth Ward wanted to marry me, but I turned him down. I'm afraid that John, my husband, believes I was still in love with Kenneth. How long ago were you married? Just a month ago. I'd only met John about two months before that. Just after I broke off with Kenneth, he swept me off my feet, and we were married very soon after we first met. Well, Mrs. Roberts, you said before that your husband's actions were peculiar. How did you mean that? Let me tell you what happened, Mr. Keene, the day I found out about Kenneth's murder. It was late in the afternoon, and my husband, John, had not returned home from his office yet. My brother, Arnold, came over to our house unexpectedly. Just a moment. Arnold! Hello, Linda. Well, I didn't know you were coming over today. Did you tell John? No, no, I didn't. Arnold, what's wrong with you? You look pale. I've just had a shock, Linda. And I'm afraid you're in for one yourself. What kind of a shock? Kenneth Ward was murdered last night. Kenneth? Murdered? Now, now take it easy. But it... It can't be possible. I saw him on the street only two days ago. He's dead, Linda. It's horrible. He was shot in his own apartment last night at 11 o'clock. Last night? At 11? Yes. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Oh, oh nothing, nothing, Arnold. I, I'm, I'm just... So shocked, I can hardly think. It's John. Hello, Linda. Arnold. How are you, John? All right. And you, Arnold? I... I have some disturbing news for you. I just told Linda. What is it? Kenneth Ward was murdered last night. Isn't it horrible, John? Not to me. John! Well, what do you mean? Arnold, would you mind leaving us alone, please? Uh, no, of course not. I'll give you a ring in the morning. The police will probably want to question all his friends, including us. Goodbye, Linda. John. Goodbye, Arnold. John, did you hear what my brother said about the police? What about it, Linda? They, they'll they question you about Kenneth's murder. Well, let them question me. But last night you weren't home at 11 o'clock. The time of the murder... What are you trying to do? Get me into trouble? Oh, darling, no, no. I only want to protect you. Protect me from what? You think I murdered Kenneth Ward? Oh, I, I never... I didn't like him. I admit that. But when my own John, life... please, you misunderstood me. I only wanted to make sure that you wouldn't accidentally get yourself into trouble with the police about last night. Last night I was alone. Walking the streets by myself. It's not just an alibi, either. It's the truth. And do you know what I was thinking of, Linda? What? You and Kenneth Ward. John. He turned you down, so you married me. John. Yes, that's what I was thinking. You married me to get even with Kenneth. To show him you could find a husband if you wanted That isn't true. No, well, I don't believe you. But it doesn't matter anymore. Kenneth's dead now. Murdered. And I don't care. Just remember that, Linda. I don't care. Oh, John. John, my husband, locked himself in his room, Mr. Keene, and didn't speak to me for the rest of the day. Hmm. Well, Mrs. Roberts, uh, were all of you questioned by the police about Kenneth Ward's murder? Yes. My husband admitted that he and Kenneth had quarreled bitterly. And what about your husband's alibi, Mrs. Roberts? John had a good one, Mr. Clancy. You mean the police accepted his testimony that he was merely walking the streets alone at the time of the murder? No, Mr. Keene. John said he'd been at home all night with me, and I couldn't give him away. I see. I can't tell you what agonies I've experienced since that day. I, I had a horrible dream last night about John. I dreamed that he did kill Kenneth, and he was going to kill me, too. I dreamed that I was married to a murderer. Dreams aren't accepted as evidence in the court of law, Mrs. Roberts. It's too bad, though, that your husband lied to the police about where he was on the night of the murder. That will be held against him. Mr. Keene, you're the only one I can turn to for help. I've got to know if my husband is innocent 
Or if he was involved in Kenneth's murder, I've got to know one way or the other. I'll do what I can to find out, Mrs. Roberts. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Keene. Now let me have your address, please. I... I have a card here. Uh, what time do you have, Mike? Uh, it's 5.30, boss. Is this the time your husband usually returns from work, Mrs. Roberts? Yes, Mr. Keene. Well, Mike and I will go to your house now to speak to him. I suggest you arrange to have dinner out by yourself. I'd rather talk to your husband than alone. Whatever you say. Now, may I have the key to your apartment, Mrs. Roberts? Yes, of course. Here you are. Suppose you return there after your dinner. Mike and I will wait for you. And we'll have had our talk with your husband. Very well. And thank you again for your help. Goodbye, Mr. Keene. Mr. Clancy. Goodbye, Mrs. Roberts. So long, ma'am. Well, you look troubled, Mike. And sure and I caught a wide open floor in Mrs. Roberts' story, boss. Yes, yeah, so did I. Linda Roberts told us that she had refused to marry Kenneth Ward. Later, she evidently forgot and admitted that her husband said she'd been jilted by Ward. Well, boss, that makes her just as suspicious of the murder as her husband. Perhaps. At any rate, we'll know that soon enough after we have our talk with her husband, John Roberts. Here's the Roberts apartment, Mr. Keene. 4C. It's after 6. John Roberts is probably at home at this time. No one answers, boss. He may have been detained at his office. Uh, Use Mrs. Roberts' key, Mike. In the living room, looks empty, Mr. Keene. Perhaps you better answer that phone, Mike, and take the message to the Roberts. I'm going to have a look inside that room over there. Okay, boss. Hello? Is this John Roberts? No, my name is Mike Clancy. Oh, perhaps I don't have the right number. Oh, this is Mr. Roberts' apartment, miss. Oh. Well, is he there? Uh, Not right now. What about his wife? Well, she isn't here either. Just me and Mr. Keene. Mr. Keene? The famous investigator? That's right. Well, then you must be investigating Ken Ward's murder. That we are, miss. My name is Doris Crawford. I... I was a close friend of Ken's. Oh, you were? I think I can give you a little useful information about his murder. Well, we'll take any information at all, Miss Crawford. When can I see you and Mr. Keene? Sometime this evening. Where are you calling from? My apartment. I'll wait here for you. The address is 1123 West 70th. 1123 West 70th. I, I got it down. And don't fail to come, Mr. Clancy. Because I'll make it worth your while. I know who murdered Ken Ward. Sense preserve us. You what? Hello. Hello. Who is that on the phone, Mike? A woman named Doris Crawford, boss. I got her address here. She says she knows who murdered Kenneth Ward. Well, we'll go over to see her immediately. But what about John Roberts, sir? Aren't we going to wait for him to show up? I don't think he will, Mike. Sir? I believe he's been here at his apartment and gone. What did you find inside that room, Mr. Keene? The dresser drawers and closet have been emptied, obviously in a hurry. Looks as if John Roberts came back, packed his things and left. He's disappeared, Mike. Well, that sure makes him look guilty, boss. Yes, he certainly made things more complicated in many ways. In my opinion, Mike, solving the murder of Kenneth Ward is going to be a lot more difficult than we first believed. Just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the case of the woman who married a murderer. Meanwhile, stop tooth decay and unpleasing breath. Yes, stop tooth decay and unpleasing breath that breathes between the teeth. Use Colonel's toothpaste with dental floss action. Your dentist will tell you, brush your teeth after meals to stop decay. Clean those cracks and crevices deep between your teeth to guard against unpleasing breath. Now, Kalinos gives you dental floss action. That is, sends thousands of active cleansing bubbles to help dislodge bits of food that can cause unpleasing breath. Uh, questioning by the police. Oh, no, I'm innocent, Mr. Keene. I loved Ken more than any man I ever knew. Oh, all right, I'll admit one thing. 
Actually, I used to follow him sometimes because I was jealous of Linda Roberts. Uh -huh. When Kenneth Ward told you about being blackmailed, didn't he name the blackmailer? No, Mr. Keene. He said he didn't want me mixed up in it. Well, do you remember Linda Roberts' address before her marriage? Yes. 1412 East 28th. Her name was Weston before she married John Roberts. All right, Miss Crawford. My partner, Mike Clancy, and I will check your story. I'll take this savings bank book that belonged to Kenneth Ward, if I may. And I advise you to remain here in your apartment until you hear from me. In other words, Mr. Keene, I'm still under suspicion. Everyone is under suspicion, Miss Crawford, until this murder case is solved. Well, here's the building superintendent's bell, Mr. Keene. Want me to ring it and see if we can get some information? Well, just a second, Mike. Let's have a look at the names on these mailboxes in the vestibule. There's Dyer, Shelley, Thompson. Mr. Keene, look at this. Yes, the name of Weston appears to be still on the mailbox. Sure, and Mrs. Roberts has been married for over a month. They should have taken her name off by now. Well, she may have relatives who still live here, Mike. She spoke of her brother Arnold, remember? Let's see, the apartment's on the ground floor, 1B. Let's go in. Here it is, boss. Mike, listen. There's someone inside. But you can't stay here, Roberts. There's no place else to go, Arnold. Boss, that must be John Roberts. This is John Roberts. He's talking with his brother-in-law, Arnold Weston. Keep away from that phone. Keep away or I'll stick out. Dance preservers, they're getting into a fight. Break the door down, Mike. Hi, sir. Hi, who... Who are you? My name is Keene. Keene? The famous investigator? Well, you're just in time. This man on the floor is wanted by the police for murder. He's John Roberts. Sure, and he's out cold, Mr. Keene. He came here and expected me to hide him because I'm his brother-in-law. Boss, you want me to put the handcuffs on John Roberts? Wait a moment, Mike. He's coming around. Oh, who... Who are you two? My name is Keene, Mr. Roberts. My partner, Mike Clancy, and I are private investigators. Your wife came to me about Kenneth Ward's murder. Even Linda's turned against me. I don't blame her. I've been a fool. I, I thought she only married me to spite Kenneth Ward. She lied to the police for you to protect you and give you an alibi. Yes, Mr. Keene. Linda was wonderful, but it's no use. I guess the police will blame Kenneth Ward's murder on me, even though I am innocent. Help John Roberts to his feet, Mike. Let him rest in that chair for a few minutes. All right, mister. On your feet. I'll just take it easy. Mr. Keene... I hate to turn in my own brother-in-law, but I'm not getting myself involved in any murder case. Well, I don't blame you, Mr. Weston. Particularly since your sister, Linda Roberts, is also involved. Linda is involved in the murder? My wife had nothing to do with the murder, Mr. Keene. Arrest me if you must, but leave her alone. I'm afraid she's got to put up bail in order to free herself from custody, Mr. Roberts. Bail? How much do you need? I've got money. I... I Mr. Can... Weston... Don't you think it'd be more suitable for you as her brother to put up the money? John Roberts' position right now is very bad. His wife may want to forget that she ever saw him. You're right, Mr. Keene. I don't want a murderer to help my sister. How much money do you need for Linda's bail? Well, uh, how much do you have available in your checking account, Mr. Weston? I don't have a checking account. I'm not as rich as my brother-in-law. I'm just a furniture salesman, but at least I'm not a killer. And where will you get the money? I have a savings account of $2,000. Will that do? I think so. Uh, of course, I'll get the money back, won't I? Naturally. Bail is always returned, providing the defendant doesn't leave town to avoid a trial. Where is your savings bank book, Mr. Weston? In my desk over here. Well, uh, let me have it. Perhaps the book itself can be presented to the court clerk as an assurance. Here you are, Mr. Keene. Thank you. Uh, just a moment, sir. Uh, what are you doing? I'm comparing your savings bank book with one that was owned by Kenneth Ward. What for? So I can have final proof, Arnold Weston, that you yourself murdered Kenneth Ward. Are you crazy? Mike, look at this. The withdrawals in Kenneth Ward's bank book compare exactly with the deposits in Arnold Weston's book. The dates and the amounts are the same, boss. 
Yes, when Doris Crawford followed Kenneth Ward to this house, he was actually coming to see Arnold Weston, not his sister. It was Weston who was blackmailing Ward, and Ward finally threatened to go to the police. You won't get a chance to prove that, team. Look out, boss. He's pulling the gun. Hit. Let go of that cannon, mister, or I'll break your arm. Oh, oh, oh. All right. All right. You win. Let go of me. Good work, Mike. Here's his gun. Sure, and I knew he'd pull something like that just as soon as you called his hand, Mr. Keene. Put the handcuffs on Arnold Weston, Mike. With pleasure, boss. Mr. Roberts, Weston just mentioned that he was a furniture salesman. Does he work for the same company that Kenneth Ward worked for? Yes, he does, Mr. Keene. Well, that's how he was able to find out that Kenneth Ward took money from the firm. But Ward replaced that $1,500 soon after. Well, then that's why Kenneth borrowed money from me. It was one of the reasons Kenneth and I would quarreled. He didn't repay me. I know that, Mr. Roberts. But that didn't bother you as much as his old relationship with your wife. You're right, Mr. Keene. It was your unreasonable jealousy that started her thinking that she may have married a murderer. I hope this case has at least taught you that your wife is faithful to you. Well, things will be different from now on, Mr. Keene. Thanks to you. And things will be different, too, for Arnold Weston. Very different. He's learned something, too. And the lesson will be driven home when he faces a judge and jury. He's learned, like so many others, that you can't get away with murder. <laughs> saw Mr. Keene finds a solution to the case of the woman who married a murderer. The next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician. And in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So, next time such pain strike, take Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30, and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison, A N A C I N. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Dan Hummert. Dialogue by Lawrence Clee. Bennett Kilpack plays Mr. Keene. It is on the air every Thursday at the same time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the King Cobra murder case. Ever suffer heartburn or upset stomach from acid indigestion? Safe new Bicidol mints, medically proven, quickly rid stomach of that blown-up feeling. Give longer-lasting relief than baking soda. Yes, hours of relief. Bicidol mints not only neutralize, but actually carry away excess stomach acids. Soothe irritated stomach lining. Let you sleep all night long when acid indigestion strikes. Carry new Bicidol mints for fast relief anywhere... Any time. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, will be on the air next Thursday at the same time. This is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison and Kalinos and many other dependable high-quality drug products. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>